Hey everyone, about a year ago I recorded a video tutorial on Phototech splash effects. So I created some custom splashes by taking some watercolor and brushes and splashing it onto a piece of paper, scanning it in, providing those as support files for educational use, and I used a couple of Creative Commons photos. So uh, that's the top hit if you search for Phototech splash effect here at Good Creative Academy. I had a couple of people copy this technique, which is pretty interesting. Um, unfortunately, some people used the same support files, but um, some used their own. They created their own. So I figured I would re-record this one because it's one of my more popular Photoshop tutorials and also with better audio and a couple more things to consider along the way. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is going to be the end result of this next example. As far as photo goes, I would just choose a bunch of photos um, that you have that are available uh, it, it doesn't really matter as long as they're going to fit uh, in the this text area. So I'll explain what you need to consider there. Um, so I'm going to start just at this step. What we need to do um, is paste a bunch of, of photos or move them over into a new file in Photoshop and add some text above it. Uh, but first we need to create our custom brushes. So download the support files in the uh, description here on YouTube and then go to file open and open those splash brushes so I've got the five here and you're gonna just open them all up so click and drag uh, after you've decompressed them just open them all up and then what we need to do is take the marquee selection tool in Photoshop click and drag around uh, the area that you want to turn into a brush. It might just be part of it or the entire image either way. Now if we just define it here, you know, if you go to edit, define brush preset and then name it. So I've created five just to save time called splash brush one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, that's fine, but you might need to click a little bit more uh, when you're, you're brushing later. If you want a stronger brush, there's just one extra step. Just go to image adjustments and then you can see there's a threshold right there it brings up this threshold dialog here and just click and drag that left and right and you want to get where it's um, you can see the brush there and it's only one color so it's just black and white right so it's not uh, grayscale or a bunch of different shades of color so you would hit, hit OK and then select it there so I'll show you the difference. Um, I'm just going to go to edit after selecting it and then define brush preset. I'm going to call this splash brush uh, let's see with threshold so that way, no way we can uh, differentiate it later. Alright so just repeat that process for all five so if you don't mind having uh, to click and drag later uh, you can forward in the tutorial to know what I mean but um, click and drag or just click and let go more if it's not as strong a brush it's more transparent looking or you can add that threshold technique first but so uh, without the threshold technique you're, again you're just going to click and drag edit define brush preset and then name it and it's going to be available as a brush alright so repeat that process for these brushes and I'm gonna uh, just show you this real quick if you look at the layers panel here you'll see we have some photos some masks then we have a text layer we added a mask as well I didn't do that last time I don't believe um, I might have but this is a really important step I want to make sure we cover this time so uh, what we want to do next is just go to file open and open a bunch of photos and you can use the move tool like if you opened up uh, let's just say this photo here all right so this is a photo, I don't know if I submitted it to iStock, but I took it in Boston years ago. Um, so not all these photos are in Seattle, it's just the theme I was going for. So this is East Coast more than West Coast, but um, anyway, what you want to do is open it up, pull it off that tab, and you can use the Move tool and just click and drag it onto a new file that's large or onto another one. Then you got to zoom out, obviously, so Control minus or Command minus on a Mac. You can click and drag the corner to resize it, make sure... Uh, hit apply there. If you got the move tool, make sure show transform controls is selected up there. 
and you can click and drag it. Hold shift to maintain that proportion. So you'll uh, repeat that process, hit enter to resize it, and you will eventually, I'm going to go to the layers panel here, because I don't need All right, um, so I don't need that one necessarily for this example, but click and drag, you know, cut a handful, as many as we need, but I just click and drag four over, all right, and just situate them with some text and where the photos are going to show through the text later. All right, I'll show you what I mean. So uh, this one here, I just want to kind of in the middle, all right, this one with the scooter. And then the one of the bear over there, I wanted most of the bear right there along the S so we could see it. Just think that the photo is going to pop through wherever the text is. All right. Uh, then this one here from Boston, I just kind of put here. Uh, you could actually hold shift, click and drag the corner. Maybe put it along that uh, A there because of the shape. That might fit well. So I'm going to hit enter. And I have the bottom one just as a background for any areas that are not covered by the other photos. So we're not going to really uh, adjust that one too much. Maybe we'll bring it up like that, so give it a little bit more texture. All right, so then we have this one. Oops, there we go. And then uh, this one, let's just go somewhere like that. And then the one above it. That one's fine, I think. And then the bear there, okay? So what you want to do is add a layer mask to all these. So how do you do, you do that? Well, you, they should be all on their own layers. Just when you when you click and drag them over or when you go to edit, copy, edit, paste uh, into this new file. Uh, just add a layer mask down on the layers panel right there. And it'll add a layer mask to each one as you select them. It doesn't have any effect by default. What we want to do, though, is just soften the edges of this. So choose the brush tool. Make sure uh, black is your foreground color. You can press D on the keyboard and then X to flip them. So D will make the, the default. It's the white foreground, black background. And hit X and you can flip them back and forth. So we need to choose a soft edge brush as a default, something like that. Hardness set to 0%. And with the bare one right here, I just want to soften the edges a little bit. So don't do that because I just painted some green in. Got to make sure we're on the mask. So make sure you click on the mask here in the layers panel. Then click and drag. You'll notice. I'm clicking black in, and that's masking it out. It's better than erasing. You can alt or option click the mask and see where the mask is, and alt or option click it again, and it'll go back to normal. And if you mess up, the cool thing is you can hit X and it'll flip it, or just set the foreground color to white either way, and you can paint in and it'll bring it back. All right, so X, black to paint out, X, white to bring back in. All right. So I'm just going to soften the edges for this. So I like that effect with uh, this example. And then with this one with the scooter, we uh, I'm just going to soften the edge up here, leave a little bit of that in the middle there, and something like that. And this edge here, we don't really need. I want that actually to show through to that below. All right. And then the ship here, I actually want to move the scooter over a little bit because I wanted the ship um, above. I'm going to click and drag it above in the layers panel. And this one I do want to mask out uh, this ship over here. I just want to get this one here. Uh, maybe a little bit of the other one. Something like that. Alright, so it looks like a mess right now, but that's okay. It's going to uh, it'll look better later. Uh, just however you want it to look, and you can toggle with the icon these different uh, layers. So if you find that, uh, okay, this this one right here, we want to make it a little bit smaller. You can always click and drag the corner there so we can see more of the scooter. All right, something like that. So, and also notice the edge here that's on that one, yeah. So I want to get rid of that edge, so I'm going to paint black in there on the mask. All right. And then this one here. All right, so soften that edge. All right, so then you have just kind of a collage of photos with soft edge that kind of blend into each other. And you want to make sure your text is on top so you can see it the whole time. So you just choose the type tool, click and let go, and type something in. So last time I used Tampa, use the 
move tool, you can click and drag it to make it larger. Uh, impact is a good one. You want a strong font, a, a large font, so it'll show through in most of our examples. Um, this is a slightly different font that I've got. I'll delete that so we don't need that one for this. Um, so this one right now I'm using is Gadoogie Bold. I've never heard of that one before, but um, this one's a pretty good one, I think, for this example. So what we want to do next is, now that we've placed these where we want, just uh, select all these. So select one of these uh, that has the mask on them, and then hold Shift and select the top. We'll select everything in between. Or if you hold Control on the PC or Command on the Mac, you can click on them individually. But we just want to make sure all these are selected. All right. So if you do Control E, right, it will combine them all. Uh, but we don't want to do that because we want to actually uh, keep these layers in case we want to use them later and adjust them. Uh, I didn't really use the mask on this one, but that's optional, but you could soften the edges too while I'm thinking about that. You know, if you just want to soften the edge like that, etc. All right. But anyway, uh, just select all these. All right. Hold down Control Alt on the PC or Command Option on the Mac. Also hold down Shift. Uh, make sure the text layer is not visible and also the background. So we're just going to have whatever's visible is going to be merged and then copied. So why we did that is now we keep our old layers but we're just copying everything together that was visible into its own layer right here. All right. So we need to click and drag that above the text layer and then turn uh, the type layer back on. Hold down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac and hover your mouse in between these two. That'll add a clipping mask and now we got uh, this cool effect here but we can make it a little bit cooler with our custom brushes. So what you want to do, this won't work until we rasterize this text. So it won't be like a text layer where I can still, for example, you know, if I wanted to make this Tampa or if I wanted to make this uh, Orlando, Paris, London, you know, you get the idea. You can still edit it. All right. Uh, I'm going to put it back to Seattle. All right. And then we need to rasterize it. So right click over Seattle or control click on the Mac. Make sure you're right clicking over the name, not just the T. That'll give you these options. Make sure you right click over the name of the layer and the layers panel and then do rasterize type. What that does is now it's actual pixels. All right. So now it's pretty cool. We can select our brush tool, go and find our custom brushes we just made, and you'll see the difference. So uh, this is one I didn't do the threshold technique on first. So let's just say I want to see some more of the, the bear scene there uh, without it you know, making too much visible where you, it wouldn't look like an S anymore. So there's kind of an art to it. So if I click once, you notice it's kind of transparent. So what you would need to do is just click a couple times and it becomes stronger. All right. I'll zoom in here so you can see more of the detail. Uh, let me choose a different brush here for some variety. Uh, that one's pretty cool. All right, so let's just say we did something like that. Just click and drag it over. If you do it too much, all right, uh, what you can do is actually add a layer mask to this. So add a layer mask and then choose a brush tool. And now making sure we're on the mask, make it a little bit smaller. And now making it a little bit smaller, you can click and drag and it gets rid of it. See, I could completely get rid of the content. I'm going to undo, um, but we just want to maybe get rid of some of the top area there. All right. So let's choose another one. How about this one here. This one we did the threshold technique on. So look how much stronger this one's going to be. I'll show you what I mean. Um, let's make sure I'm back on this, not on the mask. I'm just on the actual uh, pixels here. If I just click once, see how strong that is? That's because I did the threshold technique first. So you just want to experiment with the different uh, brushes. If you want them to point different ways, you can kind of randomize as far as the direction of the brush. You just go to window and then brush and under shape dynamics just check that and go to angle jitter so what that'll do it'll rotate it if you just want to rotate it a little bit or you can rotate a lot uh, it's pretty neat 
because then you it will change as you go along and you can rotate it it'll change size and uh, you can adjust different brush settings there so if I just click click see how it's changing directions as I go so this is pretty cool technique I think with custom brushes if you do it too much you start to lose uh, the detail of the words uh, so that's when you would want to either undo or go to the brush uh, or go to the mask right there and then you know just get rid of some of uh, the, the stuff we've painted in alright so you can do something like that if you want the background you can just click and get the background back right so it's a pretty cool technique um, maybe post in the comments uh, any links to things you've created using this technique uh, feel free to use the support files as far as the brushes uh, you know for for this tutorial and subscribe if you learned a lot about layer blending custom brushes and uh, figuring out a creative way to customize text in this Photoshop tutorial thanks